with so much drama in the AE dub. What's going on, guys? Good mic work back at you with a live mic drop. Had to come up here and talk about this. Had to. Everybody else is talking about it. Colossal, in my mind, dynamite embarrassment last night for AEW. As for some reason, for whatever reason, AEW and Tony Khan decided that it would be a good idea, a tremendous idea, that won't backfire or have a negative effect at all, to air the backstage footage from All In, an event that took place seven or eight months ago that led to the departure of CM Punk that was one of the ugliest black eyes in the company, something like that going down right before the first match of their biggest show uh, is uh, completely ridiculous and is something in my mind that AEW should never want to remind themselves of. They should do everything in their power to put situations like that behind them and to drag it all back up again and for it to be from what I can tell from, you know, social media, from, you know, level headed people to the haters to, to all different genres of fans, pretty much across the board. Everybody agrees this was a stupid idea. And it's really hard to uh, debate that. This was something that I uh, thought when it was announced that was kind of dumb, but I'm like, well, you never know. Maybe the, we don't know what's on this footage. Obviously, CM Punk said some things in that interview with Ariel Helwani that pissed off Tony Khan. And, you know, some might say triggered him and he wanted to make some knee jerk, crazy reaction to maybe make punk look bad or embarrass punk or prove some part of his stories wrong. The footage didn't really do that. You know, the only thing I think the footage really did, uh, and we're going to talk about it and break it down here in a minute. But I do think the footage did reveal why AEW had every right to fire CM Punk. He clearly threw the first shot and went after Jack Perry. That's what happened. That, to me, is a fireable offense. Now, granted, backstage working at a wrestling show is not the same as working, you know, you know, in a corporate CEO office or something like that, where if you throw a punch on a coworker, you're probably automatically fired without, you know, uh, without hesitation. A little different in wrestling, but still, you know, when you attack somebody and go after them, you know, he had every, had every right to be fired, which is probably what he was trying to do anyway. Another thing that the video revealed was the... The report that we heard about CM Punk lunging at Tony Khan, you know, Tony Khan said he feared for his life. A lot of fans are like, why would you fear for your life? Well, all that happened right in front of him. We saw those monitors there. The monitor did tip over. Punk did kind of lunge and point at Tony Khan. And remember, Tony Khan, just a little squirrely 140-pound guy. It's very realistic to believe that he may have feared for his life if a guy who's been in the octagon before is lunging at him. It's not out of line there. So I feel like the footage kind of proved that and it proved that you know punk threw the first punch and whatnot but none of this was going to make punk look bad i think the only i think maybe what it was is punk said something in the uh, in the helwani interview like i didn't punch him i choked him a little so i think maybe when khan heard that it pissed him off and he wanted to show the footage to show that punk really did throw the first punch but even if it did reveal that what what is you know a lot of people were saying this all week before the footage here what positives can it bring what positives can we can it bring and i'm like well your timeline is full of negativity so i don't know why the fuck you would give a shit about anything positive at all but it is a fair question and i wasn't sure what positives were going to come out of this either because this type of stuff has happened before vince we're going to go through for all you people that think this is the worst biggest embarrassment in aew history then you're just not a wrestling fan you just don't know history because Vince McMahon had one of these moments. Vince McMahon had the Tony Khan play the all-in footage moment. It was called the Brett Screwed Brett promo back in 1997. Brett's gone, headed to WCW, and WWE de dedicates an entire segment with a big Bret Hart poster in the background to talk about a backstage fight that happened with a guy that's going to WCW. Vince McMahon puts himself in the position believing he's going to be the babyface. And he came off like a prick. It was an embarrassing interview that made did nothing but make him and the WWE look bad, and it backfired. Only thing is, difference is, it backfired in the best possible way, because that led to the creation of the Vince McMahon character, which then led to the, then led to the Austin feud, and it was the best mistake WWE ever made. That's best case scenario. I don't see AEW falling ass backwards into a backfire that benefited them in this case. Uh, it does. It draws a lot of comparisons in my head to the Brett Vince screwed Brett screwed Brett interview from Vince and this because they were both knee jerk reactions made by weak, mentally weak promoters. 
You know, Vince McMahon was so fucking, he wanted to go on and explain the side of the story, knowing that that's not going to benefit you. You're drawing attention to the past now. You're moving away from Brett. Why are you talking about him? And why are you talking about him knocking you out? And then you're going to try to try to do this interview to gain sympathy for yourself and make the fans turn on Brett. And that did not happen. So the same thing here with, with Tony Khan. I don't think any fan, regardless of where you stand in this whole thing, is coming away from this seeing Punk any differently. You know, I still believe everybody. There's no innocent victims in any of this. A lot of people played a role in all the bullshit that went on over the course of two years with CM Punk. A lot of people played a role. You know, so it's not like... Uh, you know, it's not blameless and there's a lot of people at fault, you know, but at the same time, Punk, what we saw on the footage basically just backs up the personality that we know Punk to be. Plus, he was very, very frustrated in AEW. If people think that he might have gone after Jack Perry as a way to get himself fired, I could believe that. He certainly seemed unhappy there. And you saw in the footage the way he lunged at Tony Khan and then he just walks away pissed off. Chris, he Chris Hero going like that. You know, it was interesting to see, you know, as a wrestling fan, I was intrigued. I wanted to see the footage. I was intrigued by the drama that it could spark because I enjoy this type of stuff. Fans take it way too seriously. They get all hot headed and they're pissed off and foaming at the mouth at Tony Khan. And, you know, I just, I just say, go out there and live your life. There's a nice, beautiful world out there with sunshine and grass. Go out there, smell it, touch it, all that stuff to focus so much of your hate, anger, and personality on being so angry and triggered by this, regardless of what side you're on. If you hate punk or you hate Tony Khan or whatever, you know, I've seen a lot of just batshit insane behavior on social media in just the last 24 hours. And before it even aired all throughout WrestleMania weekend, you had assholes like Eric Bischoff who completely ignored two of the best days of pro wrestling we've ever had as wrestling fans. Cody Rhodes finishing his story WWE on top of the world. Not one single WWE tweet in a four day span by Eazy E. It was all AEW, all how he hates Tony Khan, all how he's so goddamn fucking insecure about his own history that he just focuses all of his energy and hate on them. And they hadn't even aired the footage yet. And I'm like, look, I understand that on the surface, this seems like a stupid idea. There's not, there's not a big part of me that feels like this is going to be beneficial to them. But I still at least wanted to see what the context was, what they were going to do. And then when we saw how they framed it, which did have some comedy aspects to it, the fact that the Young Bucks are basically blaming their loss on FTR at all in on the fact that one of FTR's friends started a backstage scuffle, which distracted them from their pre-match routine and they weren't able to pray. That's gold. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. And I laughed hard at that, okay? So I'm not, you know, it, 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 it's not lost on me that there are some parts of this that did make me fucking chuckle a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's the footage that we're talking about here. At the end of the day, it's the decision to air the footage is what we're talking about. And... <laughs> Just it's stupid. It was just a bad idea. A bad idea. Was it a catastrophic idea that's going to end the company? No. <laughs> that would be a no. You would have to be a goddamn fool to believe that. Let's just talk about some of the uh, desperation moments, okay, that we've seen from other companies. WWE had the, and this is just off the top of my head. Let's see. We had Billionaire Ted skits in WWE, which is a fan I kind of liked, but really made them look stupid. Uh, don't forget about the fake Razor and Diesel. If Tony Khan brings out a fake Punk and a fake Cody, imagine that. Imagine that. So for all you people that, that think Tony Khan is the worst and most easily triggered and weakest promoter, you don't know Dick. Because he is no weaker or mentally unstable than Vince McMahon or Eric Bischoff or Paul Heyman for that matter. Each one of these promoters or heads of their respective companies back in the day made countless, frequent, embarrassing mistakes. None of them killed the company. None of them. This will go down as one of AEW's embarrassing regrets. I think the talent's probably embarrassed about it, wished it didn't happen, just like a lot of talent was embarrassed when Vince went on TV and said, Brett screwed Brett. There was some talent that didn't show up to TV after the Survivor Series. So there's been plenty of disgruntled talent. We had a mass exodus walkout in WCW of the radicals hopping over to WWE, among others. There's been plenty of times throughout history that wrestling companies or promoters have made stupid decisions that have really made the talent uncomfortable or not want to be there or work there. This is no different. And I'm sure there's a bunch of, you know, kind of frustrated AEW talent, too. There's like, why are we bringing this back up again? Why are we doing this? You know, what what is it? What's the point? What does it benefit? And I... 
And I understand that. I completely understand their point, and I would be asking the same questions if I was them. But in WWE, you had shit like the Billionaire Ted skits. You had the fake re Razor and fake Diesel. Imagine how asinine that was. Apply that to something today. Imagine a fake punk and a fake Cody. I actually think it would be funny if Jack Perry started using cult of personality. You know, what's the rules with licensing music? You know, do you have to get the approval from Living Color? Like, can they say, no, we don't want you to use our music. It's only for punk. Or could they, could Tony Khan just buy the rights to that and use it for Jack Perry? He could. That's about as close to a fake razor or fake diesel as we're going to get, I think, in AEW. So it's not that bad. Let's not uh, forget about the Brian Pillman gun incident. And of course, like I said, the Brett screwed Brett interview with Vince McMahon that completely backfired. But it backfired in the best possible way for the company, and that's rare. And I don't think that's going to be the case for AEW in this one. What about our friends WCW? If you think that AEW is anywhere near as bad, then 2000 WCW, you a fool. You a damn fool. Let's not forget about Eric Bischoff getting so agitated that uh, DX went and had some fun at uh, the Norfolk Scope that he then decides to challenge Vince McMahon to a match on pay-per-view. Roster full of talent. A lot of these talent making lots of money. Flew a lot of this talent in for the show. And at least a few of them aren't going to get a match because you're going to be out there stroking your little tiny dick over the possibility of Vince McMahon showing up, which he is not. And you're going to troll the fans. You're going to sell pay-per-views on that because some fans might not, you know, who are just watching and, you know, aren't uh, smartened up or dialed into the behind-the-scenes stuff might actually believe that Vince McMahon is showing up on WCW and buy the pay-per-view and spend 40 bucks on it. 40 bucks in 1998, which is about 70 now. So let's not absolve them. Ever hear about a character in WCW named Oklahoma? What about uh, the Kiss Demon? Did you ever watch anything WCW did with uh, David and Ric Flair? What about Vince Russo winning the WCW title? So let's not pretend, and this is just shit I'm thinking of, okay? You guys can elaborate in the chat. Let me know of more stupid things that both companies did. This will go down as a stupid thing that AEW did. This will go down as a regret. Years later, if, they, if, if Steam picks back up and they get moving again, they're going to look back at this and say, man, remember how, how desperate things felt back then, you know? And that's why the pendulum is swung. You know, AEW was a vastly better product than, a, than WWE from 2019 to 2022, beginning of 2022. And then it kind of turned the corner. Once Cody came over, even though Vince was still there, it felt like uptick, you know, for them. But for a while there, there was no comparison. I I greatly enjoy, vastly enjoyed AEW more than AE, than WWE for about two years there. And uh, that's not the case now, but it definitely was the case then. So if I'm AEW, I'm, I'm looking at, at my, myself, ourselves, and saying, look, we've done this before. You know, we've put on compelling TV. Fans got behind us. You know, they liked our message. You know, they liked our mission statement. We were doing good things. And plus, WWE was fucking dog shit. So they, it was easy for them to you know, gain popularity when, you know, the, you know, the, the biggest game in town is feeding us a bunch of nonsense and crap and shit. It was horrible, horrible. I never, I never want to relive like 2018, 2019, 2020, you know, and 2021. Those were just fucking terrible years in WWE. Uh, some of the worst they've ever had in company history. And I've been watching since 82 and that's about as bad as I remember it getting other than maybe like 95, you know, and <laughs> shit like that. So, um, you know, this is this is just what happens in wrestling. You learn from your mistakes, and hopefully AEW can learn from this one. But, you know, in terms of the footage, you know, which we should probably get into, uh, it wasn't really that revealing. It was grainy as hell. It was security footage that they released, so it wasn't even AEW's own cameras. I was under the assumption that AEW had, AEW had cameras rolling everywhere. There was cameras rolling everywhere. I thought this was going to be some of their own cameras picking this up, but really it was just, you know, security footage and it was really, really grainy. It was tough to see. You could make out who Punk was because of the X's on his coat and you could make make uh, uh, Jack Perry out. You could see Hook over there. You could see Samoa Joe. Malachi Black came into frame. Chris Hero jumped out of uh, gorilla position to, to help out. So you could see, you know, some people here, but, you know, really what it was about was showing the altercation between Perry and CM Punk. So... Jack Perry comes back for his, from his match, and he's just right in front of these monitors where Tony Khan and other production people are uh, are sitting. And 
that's when Punk just makes a beeline right for him. He comes up, they talk for what may have been 20 seconds or something. They start talking. And Perry doesn't seem like overly defensive. He keeps fixing his hair, you know, or whatever. And I guess when he goes to fix his hair again, that's when Punk lunges in with, I don't know, a slap or a punch or something like that and kind of attacks Jack Perry, grabs him, I guess, in a front face lock or a guillotine. By that time, Samoa Joe is over there trying to pull him apart. Chris Hero comes around from the desk to get in the middle of that and just pull him apart. And they were pulled apart rather quickly. So Samoa Joe had Jack Perry on the other side of the room and Punk was then lunging at Tony Khan, pointing at him. You do see the monitors tip over and he definitely said something to him. That must've been when he said, you're a clown, I quit. And then he storms off, fuck this. And then Malachi Black kind of follows him out. So that's all that the footage revealed. And while I think it's funny that the Young Bucks set this footage up oh let's just tell the backstory here and you know they're 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 making it part they're making it a part of the ftr match at dynasty you know which is fine and i do think it's hilarious that they're blaming ftr's friend on you know uh for their loss because he distracted them with the fight and they weren't able to pray i will never not think that's funny it's hilarious uh i think that's still kind of a weak way to shoehorn this in like so basically i guess i appreciate that they at least tried to make it part of a story and they weren't just being petty let's just throw the footage up for no reason but they are still being petty <laughs> let's who are we kidding here so even though i think they try well if you make it a storyline it won't be that weird no it's still weird <laughs> sorry there's no there's no two ways about this this was a petty move but uh there's been petty moves throughout the entire history of pro wrestling and if you act like this is the only one and if this is the one that makes you the most mad then you and I are just not the same type of fan at all <laughs> or with the same type of knowledge because that's just ridiculous. This is something that I can eh, kind of take a little lighthearted. This is a stupid, fun drama. We love drama here on the channel. It's, it's good for business. So whenever punk drama comes up, fuck, I got no problem with it. I'll come up here and talk about it. Last thing I'm going to do is be mad, foaming at the mouth, calling Tony Khan every single other nickname that you've taken from other people and adopted as your own. I'm not going to do that because I'm smarter than that. I just like to watch, you know, watch the drama. This is all kind of fun for me. It's a little bit interesting. I think it's dumb for AEW to do this, but fuck, I don't work there. I feel bad for the talent that had to deal with it. I think it's a little bit petty, but shit, I've been watching wrestling for a long time. So this is just one example of dozens of examples throughout history that I can think of of a wrestling promotion doing something fucking stupid. <laughs> you think it's the last time we're going to see this from anybody? You think WWE is not going to do something dumb? On their TV, or somebody's to say something stupid in an interview, or whatever. This isn't it. This isn't it. This is always going to continue. I think my biggest problem with it is if I'm sitting from a position in AEW, the number one priority for me would be to move away from CM Punk, to forget he existed, and try to build a brand, an exciting brand, without any of his fingerprints still on it. He's back in WWE right now, having the time of his life in the middle of a great program with Drew McIntyre, going to finish up his career there and ride off into the Chicago sunset, a legend. So you have to forget that he was ever there and just move on and do what you do. But if Jack Perry, who now I assume is going to show up at Dynasty and help the Young Bucks win the tag team titles, that's what they're going to, well, that's what they're going for here, right? That's what this is leading to, I assume. And Jack Perry joins the elite and joins Okada, great, but... And I think Jack Perry, I think, has done really well with some merch on the scapegoat merch and whatever. You know, this could, if this, if this builds Jack Perry into the star or into a star that we never really thought Jack Perry could be built into, then, you know, this would have maybe not the same, but maybe a similar happy backfire effect that the Vince Screw or the Brett Screw Brett interview did, you know, because that created the Vince McMahon character. If this creates the Jungle Jack Perry character, this monumental douchebag <laughs> who is just universally hated, just like Vince was. I mean, that's to me, that's the best case scenario here for AEW is to try to make Jack Perry Vince McMahon from 1997. Were you crazy, Greg? It's not the same. I know it's not the same. I'm not an idiot. I'm saying the situation, though, is the same. You know, this is the type of stuff where the intended result isn't what you get, but turns out to be a better one instead, maybe, that type of thing. So I guess that's the best case scenario for AEW in this, is that when Jack Perry, who hopefully shows up at Dynasty, helps the Bucks win, they win the tag titles, Okada's got that Continental, then you uh, send Jack Perry after 
maybe Edge's TNT title. One of them cope opens. Jack Perry comes out, puts him down. You got all the gold over there. And they become, you know, just a douchebag faction. We've seen lots of those before. NWO and DX and lots of just factions with assholes. And maybe it can turn out to be great. Maybe they can have, you know, a Vince McMahon heel 98 or an NWO level of, holy shit, that came out of nowhere type of thing here. Maybe it'll all fall flat and it'll always be remembered as a petty, stupid, embarrassing mistake that AEW did. Or there is a chance that maybe this could snowball and balloon into something. I'm not really right now feeling it, but you never know. We got to get Jack Perry back to TV, see how the fans react to him and uh, how all that goes once you can, I guess, really uh, thoroughly judge it. But overall, um, it was an interesting night in wrestling. Right after we just came off, I'm trying to rest. I'm still in my WrestleMania 40 hangover. I planned on taking two days off of wrestling, uh, just not kind of paying attention to it. But AEW advertised that they're going to air this footage. I'm like, well, I guess I got to pay attention to this. And I had to work last night and I was trying to eyeball on my phone. And finally I was seeing updates for you guys. And I saw the footage at work and I'm like, oh, okay, okay. I'll get up and talk about this tomorrow. So uh, that's what we're here to do today. And I've been talking for nearly 30 minutes and I haven't even said hi to the chat yet. So why don't we do that? And I hope you guys are having a great, what the hell is it? Thursday afternoon. Uh, We got a good amount in the chat right now. 228 folks in here. If you could do me a favor and give that uh, thumbs up up button a smash i would appreciate it and i also have some interesting news i just noticed when i looked at the date april 11th 2024 today is the 14 year anniversary of my first ever video on youtube sorry i had no video commemorating the anniversary but we'll do a big one next year for the 15th anniversary that's going to be fun but let's say hello to some people in the chat let's get some thoughts and let's get some opinions and that kind of thing. We got some super chats hanging out. One from my boy, Tomas Aridia. Thank you for the $9.99. That had to be the most embarrassing act of pettiness I've ever seen from AEW. Very tacky. Never thought I'd go to these lengths to defend CM Punk. Let the man uh, live his life. Uh, yeah, it was an embarrassing moment. Uh, in the grand scheme of wrestling, not even close to the most embarrassing thing. But in terms of modern last five years history, sure. Uh, very uh, petty. And uh, very tacky, for real. Uh, But I do warn that if you already have a stick up your ass about AEW, you're going to take this footage way worse than everybody else. And you can just see that play out on social media. (laughs) Just calm down. It's not even your company. I don't know why you're mad. But uh, I think uh, things like this, when it happens, you can't... A lot of times you can't get any real fair criticism because the criticism, they they can't filter the hate. You know, it's like when you have a have to have, have a governor on a on a bus so it doesn't go too fast. Like they can't, or you know, or what is it? Uh, re- relegate the pressure on everything coming out. It's just like have so much hate built up and it just explodes out of every orifice. And I'm like, you know, if you just talk about this like a human, uh, you can really break it down quite rationally. And uh, in terms of what they did, I agree. Uh, I don't think it's the most embarrassing act of pettiness I've ever seen. Not even close. Not even the same fucking universe. But it's still petty, and it's still tacky, and it's still dumb. <laughs> and I agree with you 100%. Chris Ludeck, uh, EW, made themselves look like fools. Tony Khan has painted his promotion as clearly inferior. He needs to stop booking week to week and more long-term plans. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm, again, this is the sky is falling type of stuff. Um I just laid out a whole bunch of examples of Vince McMahon, Eric Bischoff, and Paul Heyman being unstable, petty, weak fucking idiots. They've all done it. They all do it. Put yourself in the shoes of a promoter. You know, we've seen Tony Khan already kind of fly off the rails on social media. Think of this, okay? Give Vince McMahon, Eric Bischoff, and Paul Heyman all Twitter accounts in the 90s. Tony Khan is going to look like motherfucking Teresa to these guys. Tony Khan is going to look like Uncle Joey from Full House. Tony Khan is going to be about as well-behaved as you could even fathom someone being if you compare him to how they would have been with Twitters. Promoters are under a lot of stress. Promoters are under a lot of pressure. Promoters wear a lot of hats. I don't know why Tony Khan wants to book every single aspect of his fucking show. Sounds like they've been making some good hires backstage to help delegate out some responsibility to where it doesn't all fall on Tony Khan. But I still think he's kind of doing a little bit too much. Plus, he's under pressure. He's lack of sleep, bad mood, sees something on TV, gets pissed. You know, you guys all do the same thing. You see something on social media you don't like. What do you do? You know, so this is just Tony Khan doing the same thing. This is directly 
affecting him, you know, or he sees somebody lying and he's been up all night, you know, or he's had a very early morning or whatever it is. He's fucking grumpy, had his, hadn't had his coffee yet. And then he gets mad and makes a stupid decision. Everybody does that. It's human. Uh, I don't think, I think Tony Khan has leadership problems. I think Tony Khan uh, does not have the full respect of his entire roster. I think there are a lot of things about Tony Khan that could be better. But this idea that he's the most inept, incapable person comes just from deep hate and nothing else. This is fans deciding something is true and just going with it because that's the way it is. I agree with you, Chris, that AEW look like fools. I agree with you, Chris, that Tony Khan has issues, but I do not agree that his promotion is clearly inferior. I don't even know if you, what you mean by inferior. What does inferior mean? They're the number two wrestling promotion in the world. They have a cable television program here in the United States. Only one other company has that. So sure, they're inferior, inferior to WWE, perhaps. But in terms of the grand landscape of wrestling promotions, they're sitting at number two, baby. So I don't know what inferior really means. I think that's more of the fans' frustrations and anger coming out, and they're saying words that don't make sense. That's my that's my take on it. So I'm, I'm all for you know the Tony Khan criticism, but some of y'all are terrible at hiding your hate for him. Uh, the new one, thank you for the five bucks. You retracted your message. <laughs> okay, uh, thanks for that. Yo, I got to shout out some channel members too. It's not just them, uh, the Super Chats that are here. We also got like Max Pokey, bro. We got All Sports Scripted, Nick Musser. We got Jay Lambo. We got Zane G. We got Denny Downbad in the house as well. Good to see you. Uh, Big J, Garrett Osborne, Spartan Sprinkles. We got Mike Witt. We got C-Mac. We have... Uh, I'm just trying to hit the channel members here, and then we'll back a back a track. Uh, who else? Mike Gokumo, good to see you. Mike Witt's got two bucks, two words. Katie Vick, I forgot about Katie Vick. Shit, worse than punk tape, in my opinion. You know, I don't know, though, because Katie Vick, I feel like we could separate from this. Uh, what I felt like AEW did last night was desperation, and WWE and, and WCW have had moments of desperation. The billionaire Ted Skits were desperation. The fake Razor and Diesel was desperation. Brett screwed Brett was desperation. The Pillman gun incident was desperation because they were getting their ass kicked in the ratings. WCW, Kiss Demon, desperation. Uh, Vince Russo winning the title, probably the same thing. Katie Vick was just a storyline. That was just a storyline that was dumb. They weren't doing it out of any... Uh, reaction or pettiness or competition. There was no competition. WCW was gone. So it's not like they were getting their asses kicked in the ratings. Maybe they wanted to spice things up with an edgy storyline, but we've already seen edgy storylines. They were chopping off a guy's dick on Monday Night Raw in 1998. I wish they would have succeeded because Val Venus is a fucking asshole. But I don't know if I would categorize Katie Vick in this, you know, just because it was did. I think this goes into the uh, stupid storylines category. I don't think this was done out of any pettiness or spite, which is what Billionaire Tid, Fake Razor Diesel, Brett Screwed Brett, all in footage, all of that was pettiness, spite, desperation. I don't put Katie Vick in that category, but I do agree Katie Vick was one of the dumbest fucking things they've ever done. Uh, Victor Cologne is here as well. Colin Wright, good to see you, man. Appreciate the five. Oh, I lost you. I lost you. Well, damn y'all, we got to hit these uh, supers. Thank you. And like I said, this is just a, a mic drop coming up here and offering me my offering you guys my opinions on the footage. We're going to get more uh, thoughts on Dynamite and stuff on Saturday on the podcast, but I'm right in the middle of my work week. And all I really had time to do today was come up and talk about this. I didn't even watch the rest of Dynamite. I'll talk about the Will Ospreay comment, though. I did watch that, uh, but I don't have like notes prepared with news and everything. This is just me shooting the shit, flapping my gums about the all in footage just so we're clear, but thank you so much, Colin, for the five. Back in the day, a guy like Haku would sort someone out in the back, and how uh, and uh, and how would bat an eyelid? I don't even know if Haku was used as the, as the locker room enforcer. I mean, Haku has got a reputation of being a tough guy, uh, but Haku Haku was backstage when Jock knocked out Dynamite. I'm pretty sure, uh, you know, in other situations. I don't think uh, like everybody would just behave if Haku was standing there, but I would. <laughs> If I'm CM Punk and I'm pissed at Jack Perry and Haku happens to be standing right there, I might just wait and talk to Jack Perry later. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't do that right in front of Haku. Uh, fair point. Uh, good to see Ian Dunn. Uh, I should say hi to everybody else. September, Nixie, Jace, Ben Espinosa. Uh, we got Marshall. We got Roman Stone, Rodrigo, Doug Unfunny, Power Spin, Shell Shock in the house. Uh, 
Good to see everybody here. Thank you so much. Roman Stone, I think I got you. Damian Drain and Michael Cuomo. Appreciate the five from you. Well, I hope this was worth Dynamite getting 800K viewers. Reminds me of Vince talking about the anti-Ted Turner articles on air. Exactly. Livewire is another kind of good example of kind of like a desperation idea. WWE started Livewire and they were going to like answer questions from fans live on air that lasted like a month and it went straight to a taped show but they had Vince McMahon on there they had Vince Russo they would ask they would answer questions about WCW let idiot fans call in it was nuts and it was all just desperation them trying to compete you know with WCW because they were getting their fucking asses handed to them so that's uh you do that sometimes and by the way I've not have they, is the rate are the ratings out is that what they got about 800k you know if they would have drawn over a million I'm like wow people actually tuned it tuned in to see that but 800,000 if they're just, which is just their normal. Their average always feels like it's within 800,000 to a million. Last couple of weeks, they've been in the 750-ish range, which is lower. So if they're back to 800, this is what they normally do. So it wasn't, it didn't even really pay you off because if it increased you, if it increased any viewership for this week, that's only out of curiosity. That's only out of curiosity. People are going to say, I want to see this shit, <laughs> you know, but I wasn't even home and I was able to see it in five seconds. Went right to Twitter. You guys tagged all you tagged me in it. And I was able to see the, the footage right away, just right there on my little device in my pocket. Didn't even have to watch Dynamite. So, you know, they gained a few viewers to see that, but are those viewers going to stick around? Were they satisfied enough with what the Bucks said to say, oh, this look, looks like a great storyline. I can't wait to see how this plays out. I doubt it, you know? So whatever the ratings are, if they're in that 800K range, Probably wasn't worth it, was it? Uh, Spectre, appreciate the five. AEW needs to forget about CM, WWE, and Punk. I agree. They have the best roster in the world, but are focused on the wrong things. Yes, uh, but again, uh, I think another uh, common misconception about AEW is all they do is, is, uh, is react to WWE and worry about WWE. No, they might care a little more about WWE than I would like, but they're not Paul Heyman obsessed. Every single goddamn fucking thing ECW did on television was a reaction to WCW and WWE. Everything. You ever heard of the BWO? So I always compare Tony Khan's behavior to the history that I know of previous promoters. And when I measure him to them, I don't see nearly anything close to bad, as bad as what everybody else sees. I see issues. I see problems. Sometimes I want to grab Tony Khan by his neck and shake him and shake some sense into him. You know, but in terms of uh, you know, being a completely unstable fucking maniac? No, <laughs> no, not even close. Uh, but again, I think that sometimes AEW will care a little too much. But then again, to act like that offends you is really weird. I like the companies taking shots. I like when Triple H called AEW a pissant company. I liked when Cody smashed the throne. I like when Will Ospreay said, you were grinding the boss's daughter. I like all that. To get mad about that, what kind of life do you have that that makes you mad? How miserable are you that when two companies take shots at each other, it antagonizes you, it offends you, it makes you mad? Fucking snowflake? The fuck? Have some fun. This doesn't affect you. This is just fun. This is fun back and forth. When I was watching WWE and WCW and even NWA and WWF back in the day, I loved the back and forth. I loved the shots. We just watched WrestleMania 13 a week ago. By the way, this Sunday, WCW Uncensored 1995. The link is already up. We're watching that this Sunday. Last uh, two weeks ago, we watched WrestleMania 13. HBK bounced up to the ring when he's uh, making his entrance, flashed the click sign in the camera. The next night on Nitro, Kevin Nash looks right into the camera and goes right back at you, HBK. And I think that was kind of a nod. The Bucks kind of made a nod to that when they said, love your work, scapegoat, in the camera. That, was, that reminded me of that. So little things like that I kind of like. Like, that doesn't bother me. That doesn't bother me, you know. I think that there are there are limits to it, and there are definitely times when I, when AEW has done something like this where I've said, "Okay, that was unnecessary. That was dumb. That was unneeded. I didn't need to see it. We didn't need to see it. It did nothing for you, your company, your product, your roster, your talent, your pay per view. The only thing it did was draw attention to somebody else in the other company. That's fucking idiotic. <laughs> it just is. And uh, but again, there are limits." There are limits. J&M Bespoke Travels got 10 for us. Was it just me or did Renee look disappointed with Osprey's dig at Triple H? I don't think everybody's uh, commenting on that. No, I think I think uh, Renee is playing the role. You know, I think that's the way Renee would have looked and the face she would have made if she never worked in WWE and never even met Triple H or Stephanie before. 
If that would have been one of the other ones interviewing and Osprey made that comment and she, you know, kind of like one of those, I, I couldn't believe how much people were reading into that. Oh, Renee was really embarrassed or uncomfortable. No, she wasn't. She knew what he was going to say. Don't be stupid. She has no problem with that. She plays the game. She's married to John Moxley. I'm sure she's heard way worse from John Moxley in their own home. Think about the frustrations he had in that company and how angry and frustrated he was with his time there. I'm sure in the comfort of their own home, he said, he said way worse things about Triple H or Stephanie McMahon. Uh, I do not think that Renee was really legitimately upset or uncomfortable by that comment at all. I will not say that for Tony Schiavone. He did look a little bit like, what the fuck? I felt bad for him. You know, when they cut back to him after the thing and he's just kind of like sitting there. Tony Schiavone's reaction to me spoke way louder than Renee. Uh, I didn't think Renee, I thought her reaction was just fine. I kind of liked the way she was like, mm, I'm just going to not pretend to react to this one. I like that. That's fun. That's fun. Why can't we have fun in this world? Why are wrestling fans so anti-fun? I don't understand. Mike Witt, appreciate the five. Sandman being crucified like Jesus in ECW was a lot more fucked up than what AEW did too. Yeah, again, but like Katie Vick, that's just a storyline. ECW always had this like uh, this air of frustration to them. Or not frustration, uh, desperation. They were always desperate. Paul Heyman was very, very, very angry about being the number three. And a lot of times their storylines would be a reference or a reaction to WWE and, East, and WCW. I don't think this storyline really was. I liked it. I liked that they went over the edge. I, I didn't like that Raven had to come out and fucking apologize for it. I liked it. thought it was cool. It was edgy as fuck. Fucking metal as fuck for back in, in the 90s. Everything was just edgy. You know, and uh, and Sand Raven had to like apologize. He didn't have to apologize to me. I wasn't offended. I thought it was great. And Sandman's kid and everything being involved. Like back then, when you're that age as I was in the '90s, when that storyline was going on, I was probably 20. Maybe that was 19 or 20 or 20. I don't know what fucking year that was, but I was somewhere in that age, and that's the perfect age for that type of shit. Of course, I was gonna love it. So, uh, stupid uh, storyline and and angle, yes, but. Uh, that also, much like the Katie Vick stuff, I don't really categorize as like a desperation move. I just think that was ECW being ECW. And when you are as extreme as ECW was, not everything is going to land. You're going to have some great shit that works out perfectly, and you're going to have some stuff that's just overly violent and violence for the sake of violence. ECW had a lot of those critiques as well, just like AEW knows too much blood. I'm like, well, watch some 90s ECW if, if this much blood bothers you, because uh, you're going to see maybe oh a little more uh, back then in those days. Delayed grats. Thank you for the five. I've made the rounds today, and this is the most calm review of Dynamite all day. 819,000 average one night viewers up. Okay, so they did do a little bit of increase. Well, that's good. Uh, Short term payoff. It would have been catastrophic if they would have drew less. Now, this is not a very large uh, increase. I mean, we're talking, what, 70,000 there, 50, 68,000, something like that. So that's not even a very high increase. I get, I get videos on YouTube that do 68,000 views. So I don't think that when you look at the payoff that they got, <laughs> short-term payoff, but it wasn't even a payoff. They could have done 819K anyway. They could have just easily bounced back with that number with none of this shit on there. I feel like 819K is attainable every single week for them, regardless of what they're putting on out there. You know, so it's, you know, the number two. And you got to remember too, regardless of what the ratings are doing, they're always number two or three on cable for the night every week. So for all you people praying, going to sleep, laying your little head on your pillow that is in the room that of the house that your mom owns uh and you pray and you dream of aew going out of business keep dreaming because it ain't gonna happen uh we've got and thank you for the kind words there delayed grats uh that's one thing that i've noticed among all else when it comes to uh questionable decisions by aew oh the crazies come out my god they come out and they are literally foaming at the mouth i'm like you know what go find yourself a cute girl if one will talk to you and show her your Twitter timeline. Let her read it for a couple minutes. Then right after, ask her out on a date and see what she says. And then get back to me, because I'd like to know. Wrestling and root beer. Thanks for the two bucks. In no way, shape, or form was this like WCW uh, 2000. No, <laughs> it, it was not. It definitely was not. WCW 2000 was way worse. Way fucking worse. I watched it, and it sucked. Uh, Jay Boba, thanks for the five bucks. How do you think AEW roster will react to knowing that the young fucks push for this? Just proves Cody was the brains behind All In. That's uh, 
That's a lot of assumption right there. Uh, I don't like assumption. Never assume is one of the best, uh, best words of advice I ever got. And it was from a boss. My dad told me, my dad taught me what goes around comes around. And if you can dish it out, you need to be able to take it. One of my best bosses says, never assume. You assume you die. And I think assuming things, that's the fan's problem. They just decide shit's true. Run with it. Uh, I don't know if Cody is the brains behind all in 2018. I don't know how that, I don't know how that proves it. And also you're adding uh, an insult. You're calling them the young fucks. So the fact that you call them the young fucks tells me that you're not objective, Jay Boba, just being honest. I know we're all mad. I know Tony Khan and AEW's behavior gets us gets our blood boiling sometimes. But one of the byproducts from that is that fans tend to say things that just aren't true. So you might be right. Cody might have been the brains behind All In. But I don't know how you would make that assessment based on what you saw last night. That's just a leap <laughs> in my mind. Your leap might not be wrong, but it's an assumption. And assumptions are not true all the time. Uh, we got Jimmy Anderson in here. Holy shit. What time is it in fucking your neck of the woods, Jimmy? Thank you so much for being here. Always good to see you. Remember when Jim Cornette were shooting on WCW and on Raw in a segment every week, if I remember right? There you go. That's another thing. Now, I don't remember if that was necessarily a desperation thing, but uh, that's something I should have brought up earlier when they were having Cornette go on rants and the fans loved it. Cornette gets huge numbers on his YouTube channel for ranting on AEW. Well, he was doing the same thing in WWE, ranting on WCW. And now these same fans that support him and everything he said back then think that AEW should ignore WWE. They're paying too much attention to WWE. I'm like, bitch, the guy whose cock you suck on a daily basis ranted on the other company on TV live for about five or six straight weeks on Raw. The hypocrisy is off the charts. That's the type of stuff that I'm talking about here. And you know what? I loved it. I loved when Cornette ranted on WCW. I loved it. I wasn't mad that WCW was paying or WWE was paying too much attention to WCW. I couldn't give a shit. I thought it was awesome. You know, and so I understand, you know, the fans that, you know, whack off, they they jerk, they use Jim Cornette's AEW hate YouTube channel as jerk off material. They literally sit there and whack off to his voice shitting on AEW. And this is a guy that was a big part of focusing on the other company when he was working for one. So how can you complain that AEW focuses too much on WWE when the guy who shits on AEW gives you an erection did the same thing? Just consistency. It's just consistency. You know, but hate blinds all. Hate will cloud your judgment and fuck up your instincts and that's what hate does. It's just a blinding effect. Clofix C, appreciate the two bucks. What did the big Valboski do to piss you off? The Vilvag, big Valboski is a bigot. He's an asshole. He's a fuckhead. He's a dumbass. He's a complete sorry sack of fucking shit. And I invite you to go to valvenus.com for more. Please do. Mike Witt, appreciate the two bucks from you. Kind of curious what Omega's reaction was last night. I don't know. Omega, wish him well. Hopefully he's doing all right. Um, I feel like an Omega and Edge match might be happening soon uh, as well, maybe one day when he gets better. I don't know uh, with Omega. With him, it, it felt like he was, even with the brawl out stuff, he was largely um, not involved. You, you didn't hear too many things. I mean, even CM Punk after the fact, even though he can't talk about brawl out, he never has really trashed Omega. I think Omega, Omega's just a nice guy. Omega's one of the best people in the business. Uh, and I don't think... I don't think that uh, he would necessarily be happy with what we saw, but who knows? Maybe he's just like, yeah, go for it. I feel like just knowing Omega, his personality, the way we kind of have deduced it to be, is that he would largely like to forget about it too. Omega comes uh, comes across to me as the type of guy that would like to put the stuff behind him. And so to bring it all back up again, I would say there's got to be at least half of the roster that is like, why are we bringing this up? You know? It's got to be. Fox Star Killer, appreciate it, man. Damn all that. I just want to chime in that chime in that my guy, The Rock, was voted the most iconic WWE wrestler by 72% of gamers on a survey by 2K Games. Congratulations to The Rock. And props to The Rock for giving us uh, a fun WrestleMania. Uh, I, I, I feel bad for even doubting him that, that he wasn't going to be there and, and, and be good in the ring. And he actually wasn't bad. He was a, it was a fun WrestleMania faux show. Uh, let's see, who is next? Uh... 
Mike Witt, yeah, thanks for the two bucks. Another news, OJ is dead. He did it, right, Greg? Yes, OJ Simpson absolutely did mur murder uh, Nicole Brown Simpson and uh, her friend Ron Goldman. He absolutely did. <laughs> uh, I've never once doubted that he did. Uh, it's 100% clear that he did. Uh, boy, I was just start. I remember when uh, I was uh, my first job in a restaurant. I'd only been working about a year. I'd only been in the workforce for about a year, year and a half maybe. And it was when the NBA finals were on. And uh, they did the split screen with the OJ chase. And I saw it in the bar and I went back to go tell the dishwasher, Tom, because he and I used to talk about the OJ trial. And I was like, uh, just big, humongous. He was probably like 400 pound black guy. Rest in peace, Tom. There's no way you're probably alive today because he was like 60 back then. And, oh, he was so nice to me. He just always helped me. Was, I love Tom. And so I ran back there to the dish room. I'm like, I'm like, Tom, OJ is running from the police. And he just looks at me and goes, well, that means you did it then. <laughs> it's clear. That means you did it then. And I'm like, I know, right? And uh, I just, I'll always remember that, like watching the OJ chase and stuff. But uh, uh, OJ's a murderer. And uh, have fun in hell, OJ. Uh, great white Sharpie. Appreciate the two bucks. I used to love AEW. Now I can't stand it. See, that right there is exactly why AEW shouldn't be doing shit like this. Because you will have legitimate, like the, the entire online community is just full of fucking haters. But there are people out there that are legitimate fans of the product, that do like what they see, that don't want to see this. And when they see something that's petty or a stupid idea or is a knee-jerk reaction or isn't going to benefit you, your company, your roster, or be any more entertaining for the fans, you can lose audience. And that is, to me, could be the biggest part of the backfire. You don't want to do something that's going to alienate and turn off your audience even more. You're already dealing with the declining kind of numbers and shit. So you're going to do something that's going to make it worse. I feel like, again, I hate to draw parallels to this, but WWE, I feel like did that in late 97. I did. I felt like as a wrestling fan that WWE could not get any lower than where they were in November and December of 1997. Because it was right after Brett, talent was disgruntled, Vince looked like an idiot, Brett's going to WCW with the Hart Foundation, you know, most of them are going away too, and that was a big part of your TV. Uh, Brett Hart was the favorite wrestler of a lot of wrestling fans, including myself. And well, what the fuck am I going to watch WWE for now? Thank God for them, they had Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then Mike Tyson came in in January and they were off to the races for WrestleMania 14, but it was not looking good in November and December. I thought it was about as low as WWE could get, and it turned me off as a fan. And so I can see AEW fans having that feeling about what they saw. Like, why the fuck are they showing this? Fucking stupid. Spectra, good to see you, man. Appreciate the 10 bucks. AEW is at its best when they focus on themselves. They fall and rise, the fall and rise of Adam Page, MJF Punk, everything Swerve and Joe Touch. Why bring up the black eyes from their history? Focus on what's good, Tony. Exactly. You're bringing up moments that you want to forget. Why would you do that? You know, why would you do that? And I, and again, like one of the things I loved about AEW the most and just any promotion that would come up and, and challenge WWE is just giving it an alternative. That's all I've ever wanted all AEW to be. You know, fans get too caught up in the comparison. Oh, WWE's bigger. That means we're winning. I'm like, no, it's, there's two wrestling companies. One should be different from the other, and one should offer you things that the other one does not. So we get a lot of blood in AEW. We get a lot of, you know, it, it's focused on, on on work rate, you know, in the ring, crazy matches, you know, broadways, things like that. You don't get too much of that in WWE. You get sometimes WWE can have some fucking bangers. Their, their roster is just as capable of putting on five stars as AEW is, but AEW focuses differently. You don't have two wrestling promotions doing the same shit. And when WWE tried to do their brand split with Raw and SmackDown, I'm like, you have two promotions doing the same shit. Raw and SmackDown are the same show. One's got blue lights, one's got red lights. I need something different. I need a change. I need an alternative. I need something that I can watch that's not going to look like Vince or resemble Vince or anything like that. It's always going to be a wrestling show. You're going to have a ring and a Tron and a stage and theme music. Nothing you can change about that. But in terms of, you know, how your product is presented, what kind of wrestling we see there, having something different is best. And focusing on yourself and what you do and what you bring to the table is very crucial to your success. It's the same thing with YouTube or anything like that. Don't, don't waste your time comparing yourselves to other people. 
Don't compare yourself to channel channels bigger than you or anything like that. Compare yourself to yourself. See how you've grown, how you've changed, how you've evolved, how you can better yourself and learn from mistakes or things you've done right, things you've done wrong. You know, that would that should be AEW's focus. You know, sure, you want to keep an eye on WWE. You want to be aware of what they're doing. If they throw a shot at you, you want to send one back. That's all going to happen. It's not like you have to ignore them completely because you have to be aware of what your competition's doing. You don't think WWE's got fucking eyes on AEW? Everything that they're doing, WWE is just as petty. You know, AEW is doing their pettiness on screen for the fans to see. WWE does their pettiness behind the scenes. WWE has had a four decade long history of fucking with their promotion, undercutting them, you know, with threatening to pull pay-per-views if they show the, the competitor's pay-per-view, you know, booking arenas, you know, cock blocking promotions from using arenas and, you know, booking pay-per-views on the same weekend, all that stuff. They have done that their entire history. Some dark shit, man. Some of the things Vince McMahon was doing to get ahead in the early days, and you're going to be, and we're going to be fucking flying off the rails because AEW showed some security footage. Come on. You know, like, when you really compare it, it's not that bad. But in the moment, it is very bad. And in the moment, it does look to make AEW look bad. And in the moment, it makes them look like a company that doesn't focus on themselves, that focuses on other people. And why would you want to have that reputation for yourself? Stupid, Tony. Hopefully, Tony Khan's reading <laughs> all of these uh, all, or watching all of these uh, YouTube videos because I don't like to shit on the guy. I like Tony Khan just fine. But, uh, you know, you can't you can't bullshit yourself either. And when somebody does something stupid... They need to be told they did something stupid, and he did something stupid. Spaz Phoenix is here. Oh, God, what do you have to say? Uh, I've never claimed to be objective, but I will say last night made me look forward to Raw and SmackDown and the response. Dijak, Waller, Drew, and others were in rare form last night. Cheers, everyone. Well, yeah, you think WWE is probably going to clap back, too, and I loved CM Punk's Instagram story of uh, mission accomplished, which is really funny. Um, <laughs> uh which means, you know, the way they responded so quickly, you know, Waller, I did see Waller's tweet or was it Dijak's tweet, something about backstage footage are going to show. So everybody's kind of like poking fun at it. So everybody, you know, at least from WWE's side who looked at this, laughed. Laughed, you know, and just, pfft, this. if we, we had no reason to be worried, we never thought we did, but I don't know what that accomplished on their end. Certainly didn't make us feel any worse or weird or uncomfortable, make us look like liars or anything like that. So, of course, WWE's now, AEW is going to have to prepare for WWE, maybe not even necessarily on camera very much, but, you know, social media stuff and whatnot. Uh, something might be said on Raw this week or SmackDown uh, tomorrow about this, you know, kind of tongue in cheek or a little snide comment from Corey Graves or something. I wouldn't be surprised. And if that happens, I'll have no problem with that either. You know, you can't just be one sided on this. Uh, you know, and say, oh, only one company does petty shit. They both do petty shit, you know, but some of them do it smarter than others. And I think uh, AEW did not do it right. Max, did I miss your super chat? Oh, crap. I did. Oh, I missed a bunch. Oh, yeah, I did. Sorry, I got to backtrack a little bit here. Sorry, guys. They were coming in so hot that I, uh, I think I hit refresh. Um, Jimmy Anderson, another one from you. I should, uh, I should answer this too. Is this worse than brawl for all? Again, I'll put brawl for all in that category of just a really stupid storyline idea. Uh, brawl for all. I don't feel like was really done out of any desperation. WWE was getting in the driver's seat by that point against WCW. Uh, and I think this was just an idea, you know, uh, Vince Russo, I think of course had a problem with this, but I don't know if I'd categorize it as the same as this. I just think that would go down as a really, really dumb idea <laughs> that should never have been done is how I'd categorize that, Jimmy. Also, uh, the new one. I missed one from you as well. What's up, Vontae? Thanks for all of your uh, videos that you tagged me in. I think you're tagging Solo Monster, both of us, in all of the uh, WrestleMania videos. And I'm glad you didn't get burned by that pyro, although you had a close call there. And always, as always, thanks for being here. My bad, Greg. I was asking you if you thought Tony Khan WCW'd his own company, but you already answered it my bad i gotcha uh tony khan no he hasn't wcw'd his company yet so let's hope that he doesn't and tomas i missed the other 999 from you i missed a few of these sorry and then after that max you're up on a more positive note i never got to tell you how great cody and reigns was i had an i had an out-of-body experience when taker and cena came out and i cried when cody won i loved mania i also loved mania it was a lot of fun on that night too we watched it here together uh live and my only issue is i really wish undertaker 
would have been Stone Cold. That's my only real wish there. I would have liked that better as a fan. But at the end of the day, I can live with that because it wasn't about those guys in any way. It was about Cody and Cody getting that moment and his mom and all of that. Somebody put up a really cute thread. I wish I could credit it now. I don't remember who did it. But there's like a thread of videos showing Owens and Zayn their behavior during Cody's celebration, helping Cody's mom in the ring, just being all around good dudes, you know, you know, letting Cody know, Hey, your mom's here, you know, helping, helping Michelle in and just being there, helping everybody out, making sure everybody's getting in the ring. They went out and helped Seth Rollins and, you know, just being helpful. It was just very cute. And, uh, that was an awesome moment at WrestleMania. There's that one from you, Max. Sorry, I missed that five bucks. Hey, Greg, hope you and Elizabeth are doing great. The shameful is that the anti TK morons are never going to shut up about what Tony Khan did. They never shut up anyway. They never shut up anyway. Just, I'm telling you, just go go to these people's social media page and read their timeline. It is fucking obsessive, and it's, it's embarrassing. Their behavior is way more embarrassing and petty and stupid and childish and foolish and weak and ass-baggery than anything Tony Khan could ever dream of being on his best day. Uh, these people are unstable, they're womanless, they're friendless, and they're trolls. That's all they are. You know, when you when you scroll down somebody's page, there's a couple people in this fucking chat that have accounts like that. You scroll down their page and you see 20 miles long of just retweeting hate and negativity and all that. Like I said, show a cute girl your timeline, let her read it, then ask her out on a date. And report back with me to me with what she says. Uh, Mike Witt, I missed five from you. Once he retires, Danielson should be hired as a higher up in the company. He would help stabilize uh, that company and everyone has respect for him. I already, already think he kind of has that position in the company and when he's out of the ring if he wants to stay there you know again that's going to be i don't know what danielson's views or thoughts or anything on how tony khan handles this these things are so if danielson is realizing that maybe this is not the place for him he'll finish up there when his contract is up or if tony khan wants to offer him you know a, a head of talent relations gig or i kind of had these these jobs pegged for jericho when AEW first started but i think that uh you know, Danielson staying on in the company as, as maybe, you know, a Triple H type figure who moves up and maybe, you know, becomes, uh, has a very important position in the company in the future. That could be good. I'd be fine with that. I'm a big Danielson fan. And I think he's also, you know, a smart level-headed person. If he's the one that's going to be deciding how to give, uh, when to give out fines, or he was on the committee that ultimately decided to fire CM Punk. He came to that conclusion because of what he saw in the video, which we have now seen. So Danielson made the right call. You know, you can you can do both. You can you can think what AEW and Tony Khan did airing the footage was fucking stupid, which I do. But I also can see in that footage why they had every fucking right to fire CM Punk and why he probably intended on that happening and wanted it to happen. Uh, thank you, Jimmy, for that. Yeah, uh, Jim Cornette shooting on the Raw segment. I think I answered that one already. Uh, Big Valboski, I got that one. Now I'm caught back up. Uh, on that Spectre, I got you. Spaz, I got you. Jack Sharp, thanks for the two bucks to assume it makes an ass out of you and me. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, never assume. And uh, assuming things is code written into wrestling fans' DNA. <laughs> it's just what they do. Max Pokey, bro, thanks for the two bucks. Despite what happened, Swerve and Joe is exciting. It is. I'm hoping that Joe, or I'm sorry, Swerve, gets crowned at Dynasty. And so now we're coming up on another AEW pay-per-view. And... What are the odds? You know, doesn't AEW have the history of just having something fucked up happen right before their pay-per-view? So uh, this was self-inflicted, but maybe like the weekend. When is the pay-per-view anyway? When is the fucking pay-per-view? It's not this Sunday, is it? <laughs> I scheduled a watch along for this week. Did I screw that up? <laughs> I have to look this up in real time right now because I might, might have to. Uh, AEW Dynasty. Okay, we're good. The 21st. Okay, I was like, shit, I scheduled a watch along for this Sunday, but it might be the pay-per-view. Okay, it's uh, in two weeks. Okay, we're good. Never mind. As you were. Uh, but yeah, I'm hoping at it, it, uh, Dynasty that Swerve wins the title. I would do it. I would belt him up now. New champion, fresh face. Swerve's great. Got the support of most fans. First black champion in AEW history. I think you've selected a pretty good guy to hold that uh, that accolade. And I hope that Swerve, if he wins the title, remains a main eventer you know, in, in AEW for years to come, because I like me some swerve. Mike Witt, uh, two bucks. Exactly. No, I agree with you. I actually agree with this completely. Oklahoma was the pettiest and worst thing to ever, to ever happen. It was fucking embarrassing. Uh, it was offensive. Um, and when you really want to talk about petty, Tony Khan, 
yelling on Twitter or airing security footage of a backstage fight is nothing compared to Oklahoma. Nothing. Doesn't even compare in any way. So if you are one of these obsessed asshats that cannot let go of your obsessive rage, anger, and dislike over the mere existence of Tony Khan, all that is telling me is that you are an ignorant wrestling fan. That's it. You might as well hold up a sign that says, I'm an ignorant fuck. Might as well, because that's what you are. Um, let's see who's next. Uh, we've got Zach, my friend Zach in the house. Appreciate the five from you. I'd like to personally congratulate CM Punk for becoming the new owner of AEW. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. If, if you're sitting in CM Punk's shoes today, I'm laughing my ass off. I'm, la I'm not threatened, embarrassed, uncomfortable about anything that AEW did. I'm sitting there laughing. These fucking idiots played this as, a, as some sort of gotcha moment to me. And all it did was pretty much back up what I said. If you, if you listen to what I said on Ariel Helwani, he did say he didn't throw a punch, didn't he? But either way, it, it did not, wasn't that crazy. I mean, who knows what Perry was saying to him. We didn't hear any words here. Punk did say, Perry said, what are you going to do about it? So maybe Perry said, what are you going to do about it? And that's when Punk did something about it. We don't know. Uh, but it certainly wasn't a fight that anybody won or lost. It was just a scuffle. Punk didn't beat the shit out of Perry. Punk didn't get embarrassed by Perry. None of that happened. It was just a scuffle. People broke it up. There was a million people back there. And before it even got a chance to get too violent, uh, bodies were there to separate things. And that's all it was. And these are incidents that have happened throughout wrestling. You know, backstage fights have been well-documented throughout history. And there's been some gnarly ones. This wasn't even a fight. This is a little scuffle. Brett, Brett and Sean's hair pulling fight was worse than this. So um, again, you know, for fans to act like this is so over the top and unprofessional and crazy. Do you not watch dark side of the ring? Or like, do you not know anything else <laughs> other than your own obsessive timeline of shitty behavior? Like, is there any other sort of knowledge that you have? Because if you did, then this isn't going to look as crazy to you. But to them, it's the worst fucking thing in the world and the sky is falling. Close of Clofix C, thanks for the... Dax is so cringe. Dax, Dax speaks from the heart. I'll always have a love for FDR. They're North Carolina boys, which is where I lived for 20 years. But uh, yeah, Dax, Dax is Dax. I don't have too much of a... Da Are you aware... Are you aware where your <laughs> Val Venus links gets you? Of course I am, Clofix C. Shout out to Matt Kuhn, who purchased valvenus.com or whatever it was. And uh, it is now a website dedicated to supporting trans rights. He also bought another one that takes you to Black Lives Matter, I believe. Oh, Cl oh yeah, he bought glennjacobs.com. And when you go to glennjacobs.com, <laughs> it takes you to Black Lives Matter. Shout out to Matt Kuhn out here doing God's work. Uh, thank you, Leon Hamilton, for the five. Greetings from Scotland. Oh, man, are you going to go to Clash at the Castle? I hope you are. I ain't going to lie. I, I nearly lost my voice when Cody won. I was so invested in the whole thing. That's great. WWE did a good job of maintaining that because I think a lot of fans were invested on Cody, you know, up until, you know, The Rock showing back up in that head of the table line and it freaked us all out. But they got back on track and took us into a tremendous mania season. And it sounds like a lot of fans, especially Cody fans, were just delighted. And that makes me happy. That makes me happy as a wrestling fan. Happy for Cody. Happy for WWE. Happy for fans. Happy for myself that we got a great WrestleMania this year too, you know? Uh, Rodrigo, I don't think Bischoff is in the Hall of Fame. I don't think either one of them are in the Hall of Fame. Uh, I think they both deserve to be in, uh, but they're both such fucking twat waffles. I don't fucking care to see either one of them in, but in terms of their careers, what they accomplished, Cornette and Bischoff, for sure. I think Cornette even more so than uh, Bischoff. Of course, Cornette was uh, just a legendary manager, you know, one of my favorites up there with, you know, Heenan and, and Heyman. Heenan, Heyman, and Cornette. I mean, you, you could throw a couple other names maybe in there as a top three, but that's my top three. So, um, yeah, Kurt and Eddie fought. Brett and Sean fought. Batista and Booker T fought. Who else fought? Oh, man, uh, Jacques Rougeau knocked out a dynamite kid's teeth. Danny Spivey cracked Adrian Adonis's head like a fucking watermelon. Uh, we Harley Race brought a gun to TV and pulled it on Hulk Hogan. I mean, come on here. What are we talking about? You know, Tony Khan getting a little fucking antsy and irritated and airing some shit on TV. Stupid idea, yes, but 
It's no Brett screwed Brett. Reading some more. <laughs> Thank you, Bader. Thank you for all of the uh, comments today. You know, I planned on, I knew this was going to be a very casual kind of a video because all I was going to do is talk about uh, the incident from Dynamite. We'll elaborate. We'll talk about Dynamite results, all that stuff on the podcast on Saturday. But I had to at least come up here and talk about this because it was funny and it created a lot of online discussion and it did that even before it aired. I mean, for just five straight days, I was like, God damn, guys, you know, you guys, give, do, you, do you need 46 tweets to talk about this? We haven't even seen it yet. You know, why don't you just stop obsessing? <laughs> just wait and see what we see. It's likely going to be stupid. And then when it is, fucking go nuts. But my God, just, you know, if, if, if these situations teach me anything, it teaches me that wrestling fans are more unstable than they've ever been. Uh, they're more uh, insane than they've ever been. And I think social media, it's one of the, the downfalls of social media is that you have every fan believing that they know more than everybody else around them, you know, and then they talk in this condescending type of tone. They fucking argue over everything. You could just say, oh, no, make some random post about who your favorite wrestler is. How could you think that? <laughs> he never did anything that this guy didn't. It's just audible. Like, what are you doing? What do you do for a living that this is the type of shit that you have time for? Where do you live? What kind of job do you have? Like, because it seems like a lot of passion and a lot of emotion go in to this hate. So why don't you take that passion and emotion and maybe apply it to not being a loser? Just a thought. You might surprise yourself. Because that's a lot of energy to be focused on hate. That's a lot of energy to be focused on negativity. That's a lot of energy to be focused on having 20 miles of your Twitter profile retweeting or tweeting things that you hate about Tony Khan. And then you're going to act like Tony Khan's unstable and weird? Mm -mm, junior. The unstable weird one is looking at you in the mirror. That's who that is. So I feel like if I was going to come up here today and talk about this, the last thing I was going to do was sound like a fucking crazy person. AEW did something stupid. It's well documented. I've talked for the last hour about how I think it's a stupid idea. But did I do it like a maniac? Am I screaming and yelling? No, because I don't want that audience. I don't want the Jim Cornette audience. I don't want people over here whacking off to listening to me, uh, you know, shit on AEW. That's weird. That's weird. I don't care how many views it gets me. I have a good job. I make money. I don't need this. I, I would not never want that level of, that level of, uh, you know, audience if it meant I had to be that way, you know, because you can just look at this like a person. AEW, this was a dumb idea. It wasn't, nothing good was going to come of it. You could tell it wasn't a good idea before it happened. Then it was just confirmed that it was a stupid idea when it happened. And now we're up here talking about what a stupid idea it is. You know, but not once have I called Tony Khan a snowman or what, what's the other one? Oh, he gets all his money from his dad and the young cooks and Kenny Olive Oil Twinkle Feet or whatever that Cornette, you know, just, just using all of these repeated insults and statements that other people made up that you just peddle. That's weak. It's fucking weak. Think for yourself. Formulate your own opinions and don't regurgitate what other people who are smarter than you say because that makes you look stupid. And that's all over the place on social media. That's all you see. That's all you see. You'll probably see it in the chat. I'm not reading the chat right now, but you'll probably see, oh, this is you what am I? I'm either an AEW shill or a WWE shill depending on what I'm talking about. I'm accused of both. Yesterday, I threw shade at WWE and then got accused of being a WWE shill. And I told the guy, I'm like, this is where you're supposed to call me an AEW shill, you dumbass. <laughs> like, what the fuck? People just got these like basic responses like locked and loaded and they just use them. Like, it doesn't even apply here. I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. So uh, wrestling fans behavior when things like this happen is uh, always pretty entertaining to me. Um, Clofix C. Uh, okay, yeah, thanks. And Mike Witt, appreciate the five from you. I watched Mania at bar, and when Rock and Cena had a stare down and take and Taker came out, the whole bar went bonkers. They were like, we were like 20 again. I loved it. I did like, you know, Undertaker choke slamming him. I just wished it would have been Stone Cold. That's all. Uh, I think Stone Cold would have been more fun. That's right, Sin Cara and Jericho fight. Becky and Charlotte. Oh my god, Shell Shock. Who who can forget? Who can forget the belt swap? 
The Elto. Chris Diamond, AEW shill. Nope, only in your obsessed, crazy loser mind am I a shill. <laughs> I'm not really. <laughs> so I'm actually a pretty swell fella uh, that uh, unstable little twat waffles like yourself can't live with. You can't live with anybody being logical or being adult. It has to be over the top hate or otherwise you guys can't handle it because you're all fucking weak little bitches. People like Chris anyway, not you guys. But shell shock, good point. And Becky and Charlotte had that whole belt swapping shit on TV, you know, where they were arguing. I'm like, think about that. That's happening on your TV show. I think both of those women should have been fucking suspended for being spoiled brats. So again, they're are just countless examples of things that are going to happen in wrestling that makes your company look bad, makes you look bad, makes your talent look bad, does nothing for ratings, or is just all around a bad idea. Every company has made these mistakes. The thing that I think makes this one with AEW so frustrating is that you could see it coming. It's not even one of those mistakes where you can be like, oh, maybe this can work. And then when it, was, when it doesn't work, you're like, oh man, I regret that. This felt like right from the moment that it was announced that it was a bad idea really bad idea and nobody online even the most rational rational level-headed people were out there saying like let's wait and see it play out no it was pretty much across the board i don't think this is gonna be a good idea you know i don't think it's gonna be a good idea and it wasn't a good idea and we see the result and now aew could be paying the price we'll find out if this was enough to turn off enough of their viewers to where they make any sort of significant dip next week you know, if they maintain their audience, then I guess, okay, no harm done because in two weeks, something else crazy is going to happen. We're going to forget all about this. But in between now and then, you know, how is this going to affect your audience and more people listening to the responses and the critiques and the opinions about them showing this footage and hearing what everybody is saying, largely negative, you know, I'm like, well, yeah, why am I, why going to watch a company that's, you know, petty like this, you know, and think about some of the talent that might be worried, you know, I came here because I wanted to wrestle and I wanted to, you know, I wanted to have a, a lot of fans in the arena, you know, and I wanted to get exposure. And now you doing this, you know, is making the fans turned off from our product and I'm here ready to work. I just signed a big contract. I'm ready to rock and roll. And we've got this distraction hanging over our head. And we've got this, we, we've got this, uh, you know, this thing about us where we constantly bring up the past. We can't let things go. We're not moving on. We're still harping on punk and WWE, and that's not good for my career. So there's, it, it goes, it goes deep. It runs deep. This affects talent. This affects fans. This affects, you know, maybe even people working in, in AEW who have behind the scenes jobs. Oh, I just don't think if this might not be the place for me, I don't like the way they're doing things. All that could happen, you know, from something like this. So you got to just think these things through. And I think knee jerk reactions and, uh, Making a decision based on the fact that you're mad or butthurt is never good. And I think that's what Tony Khan did here. So uh, hopefully, without knowing much about Tony Khan, hopefully he at least hears these things, you know, and people who, you know, aren't up his ass and can maybe actually just say the fact that nobody, there's some good people working behind the scenes in AEW. How did none of them say, hey, I don't think this is a good idea? The Danielsons and the and the Will Washingtons and the, you know, super smart, capable people, you know, I refuse to believe they're just going to go along with whatever he says, you know, but at the same time, I guess like if it's what the boss wants to do, it's what he's going to do. We've seen the same thing in WWE. Sometimes what, what Vince wants is universally rejected by everybody around him, but you got to do it anyway. And that's the responsibility you have as a promoter, knowing that you can make all the decisions and you can do whatever you want. And maybe you need to pick your battles. It's the same advice I give wrestling fans. Pick your battles. You know, don't just jump. You know, you guys get so fucking bent out of shape over the smallest things. Let that one go. Pick a better battle. That's a stupid battle to have. You know, and with uh, Tony Khan, he should, you know, maybe utilize some of that willpower every now and then and sleep on it before he makes a decision or see a psychiatrist or do whatever it takes to, to mentally move on from CM Punk. Because I think... The sooner they do that, the better. And if Punk does do another interview in the future where maybe he responds to this footage and then he says something, don't let it be a cycle. Then don't respond to him because Punk might be asked about this. He probably will. Next time Punk sits down for any sort of an interview, they're going to say, what did you think about AEW airing the all-in footage? And then he's going to say something that Tony Khan's going to hate. And then what's Tony Khan going to do? Book another fucking segment on Dynamite to, to respond to that? Don't get yourself caught up in that. Bad idea. Bad idea. 
Now, I don't think Mercedes made a mistake. She's making money. Mercedes is making money, not a mistake. I think Mercedes will be back in WWE, but she is taking a lot of money for an easy uh, for an easy workload here, and I think that's fine. But you have to wonder. I think she she knew what she was getting into before this. You know, this is what what as much as what AEW did last night, as much as it sucked, it kind of is in line with how they are. So I think she knew these things were possible in AEW based on all the other already existing CM Punk drama. If Brawl In and Brawl Out wasn't enough to deter her from the company, I don't think this will. Uh, but you definitely think uh, Disco Inferno's rant, I don't give a shit what Disco Inferno says either. Because Dis Disco Inferno's a biased asshole, so I could fucking care less. His opinions, I don't respect. I'm not going to respect his opinion because I already know where he stands. You know, he's not an objective... Uh, uh, observer here. He's an asshole. So uh, I don't listen to assholes and I don't like assholes, but I like all of you. You guys are the best. Thank you for hanging out with me today for about an hour as we talked about this uh, all in footage. But unfortunately, I have to now resume my day. I got to go to work and do a whole bunch of other things. So thank you very, very much for hanging out with us today. We will elaborate more on this on Saturday. We will be here for the Winged Eagle. We'll talk more about this. We'll talk about Dynamite, Big Smackdown tomorrow. Cody, I'm sure, is going to be on the show. And then we have a watch-along plan for this uh, Sunday. And uh, we're back to business this weekend. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your Thursday. Thank you so much for being here and talking about this AEW nonsense. 